Round three of Blancpain GT World Challenge Europe is in the Netherlands, back at Zandvoort, the circuit built into the dunes, just back in from the North Sea at this holiday resort. Last time out, the racing was Mizano. Very, very hot, very tight circuit and plenty of fantastic racing. The run down to the first corner, the teams, all of them were nervous, but the drivers behaved very well indeed. With a win in the bag in the first race, the FFF Racing Lamborghini of Caldarelli and Mapelli was super cautious through the first few corners, but for those behind, things got very tight indeed, including often at this infield hairpin. Racing for the first time in red, hoping to change its luck, the 88 Mercedes of Vincent Abril and Raphael Marcello was right at the sharp end of the field. Attempto Racing's Audi was pushing its way, trying to work its way forward, but every single passing manoeuvre was a piece of work. It often came through a course of several corners, as you can see, super, super close racing. But what kind of bucking Bronco as drivers went out over the edge of the circuit for the car that was making its way forward was the number two Audi, hoping to take a first win for the season. The pit stops were very, very tidy indeed. And again, just reiterate, it was super hot for everybody involved. The Lamborghini still going very, very well indeed. The Santelot Racing Audi's right at the sharp end. Black Falcon Mercedes in the mix too. But at the end, it was the number two Audi starting to pull clear. Problem for the Acker ASB Mercedes there. After a win in the first race, the FFF Racing Team Lamborghini picked its way through into second place, gave chase, but it was going to be victory for Dries van Toren for the first time, for the youngest Blancpain winner ever, Charles Wiertz. So no wonder his father in the pits was so delighted. Dries van Toor leaping into the picture, joy all around, and that continued up onto the podium. Time to spray the champagne on what had been an incredibly hot weekend of action. For 2019, the Blancpain GT World Challenge is held in the Americas, in Europe and in Asia, with both Ferrari and Mercedes nominating four drivers in each of those series to pick up points. And the star in the American scene is Tony Villanda, the Finn already three wins in the bag for our ferry motorsport. In Europe, David Perel and Renat Salikov are being shining in the Pro-Am class. And in Asia, Yuya Sakamoto, super consistent for Hub Auto Corsa. There are the 12 drivers nominated to score points for Ferrari. Good luck to them this weekend. And the three-pointed star, Mercedes. George Kurtz has been going really, really well indeed in the United States. Not yet victorious, but we will see. In Europe, though, it's Lucas Stoltz who leads the championship with three podiums in four starts for the Black Falcon team. And in Asia, Roloff Bruins is having the season of his life with two wins already in the bag. So let's take a look at the 12 drivers for Mercedes going for gold this weekend at Zandvoort. And how about a look at the points tally at the moment? It's Mercedes in front on 7633 points. Coming to Zandvoort, a driver riding very, very high indeed is Charles Wiertz, the youngest ever winner in Blancpain history, 18 years old, racing for Team WRT and he's a real new star for Audi. Look out for Charles, he's on a charge. Yeah, of course, the weekend in Misano was great. Uh, obviously, the car was quick, uh, my teammate was quick, and uh, I think my pace was pretty, uh, pretty okay. Um, the Sanford is quite an old school track. Uh, no room for mistakes, so it should be interesting. It's incredibly difficult to be at the sharp end in the Blancpain GT. World Challenge, the one driver who's doing it race in, race out is Mauro Engel. Four races, a first, a second, a third, and a fourth. Absolutely charging this year for the Black Hawk and Mercedes team. Will there be a further win here in Holland? Yeah, it's always fantastic to be here in Zandvoort. It's such a great track. Um, it's a bit of a mini Nordschleife, a bit of a mini Nürburgring Nordschleife uh, with up and down, fast sweeping corners, natural track, uh, certainly no discussions about track limits which is great, and um, we're looking forward to the weekend. Mizano, I think, was still a good weekend for us, a third and a fourth. Um, it was definitely a strong weekend, uh, even though we would have loved to, to finish a little bit better. I think it was important to take the points. Um, certainly not our best weekend in terms of pace. Uh, we hope that, that this weekend will be a lot better for us, and uh, obviously we'd love to, to end the weekend uh, on top step. Top step. For Stein Schotthorst, he is desperate to score a first win of the 2019 campaign for the attempt to add a team, but where better to try it than here in his home circuit at Zandvoort? Uh, I do know the track very well. I started racing here actually in this place when I was 15 years old, so that's nine years ago now. And uh, since then I've obviously done a lot of laps, but funnily enough, never in a GT3 car. So this is my uh, first time here in the GT3, but uh, I can't complain about knowing the track, that's true. It will be close racing here, but not a lot of overtakes, which makes the pit stop even more crucial, really, because if there's anywhere you can really do the overtake, it's, it's there. Um, so it's going to be important to practice it a lot this weekend, and the guys have already done it a bit, and they'll do it even more tonight, and hopefully uh, 
we can keep our position or even gain something uh, in the in the pit stops. The Acker ASP Mercedes team started the season with victory at Brands Hatch thanks to Nico Bastian and his young French teammate Thomas Neubauer. They're leading the silver standings and looking to see if they can continue to stretch that advantage around the dips and turns of the Zandvoort circuit. So let's see if they can strike gold in Zandvoort. Our focus is on the Silver Cup Championship, um, especially with Thomas Neubauer, who is new in the racing series. It's the target uh, from the first race on to, to win the Silver Cup Championship at the end of this year. Um, and uh, yeah, this, this we also won't, won't change. But for sure, as we are third in the championship overall as well, uh, everything what we can achieve there is a nice benefit. Great to hear from all those drivers, their thoughts ahead of this, the first of the two races. Round three of the Blancpain GT World Challenge Europe Series. Of course, there's the Blancpain GT World Challenge America and Blancpain GT World Challenge Asia Series. And we will combine all those at the end of the season and see who comes out on top. But right now, here's the scene. I'm Bruce Jones, joined by John Watson in the commentary box. We're looking down over the start finish straight. It's a blustery, not particularly warm day here. As you see, not even 20 degrees air temperature at Zandvoort, but uh, it looks like we're all set for great racing because the track conditions seem perfect. So the front row, Vincent Abril, the 88 Mercedes from ASP. On the outside of the front row, Mirko Bortolotti in that 63 Lamborghini. A second Lamborghini, this one from the FFF racing team on the inside of row two. That's Andrea Cordarelli and Lucas Stoltz in the black Falcon Mercedes in the blue livery. And then in behind, third row, Ricky Collard and the Aston Martin, number 76, and the best of the Dutch racers so far, Stein Schottfors in the best of the Audi. Around the Arian Loendijk, Bock comes the field. 28 cars in 14 rows, two by two. Once they're all on the straight and narrow, they'll look up to the starting grid. Nose in front for Van Sonnebril, half a car length advantage. We're green and already got a car peeling into the pit lane. Was that not Cordarelli? No, it's not. Cordarelli's running in third. It's a sister car from the FFF racing team, but it's all tidy for the first half dozen, the first 10 runners down to Tarzan. Well done. Everybody involved, Marillion Panis gaining a position or two at the back of the grid. A little bit of contact, you can see a bit of a blur where bodies have rubbed and down the middle order, as always, is where the action is. But the first three, very across tidy. Across the grass, so the 55 ID somehow got squeezed on the entry into this whole Hogan Holtz turn. But Marco Bortolotti was under threat from Andrea Calderelli. Managed to consolidate, he's kept his second place. Now got to focus, but side by side, up through the sand and contact. And is that a car going to go backwards? There it is, into the barriers, got tagged, two cars, just a second of the Grasa racing. All of a sudden, what happened normally in turn one has happened all up in turn ten. Yeah, they kept it clean, they kept it tidy, there are shards of uh, bodywork on the track, so for Van Sanabril, he did what he needed to do, Mirko Bortolotti was tidy in behind, and they, well, Bortolotti is deciding he's still going to have a look further around the lap, but uh, strike two cars on the record already, we saw... Uh, Stein Schotthorst being shoveled across the grass between Gerach Bocht and Hugenholz spots, but the front runners have got it under control. Well, it's let's it. take a look Watch at the, the replay. replay at the start. One of the, one of the Lamborghinis will peel off with a puncture. That's not relevant at the front not end of the field. That was down towards the front. The first three runners, very tidy indeed. For a moment, it looks so Andrea Cordarelli would go up the inside of Bortolotti, but Bortolotti stuck to his guns on the outside line. And this is where Ricky Collard goes past the black Falcon Mercedes yeah. into fourth place. Uh, as I said, if you could hang on the outside and the space for you to... There the contact. Uh, there was one of the, was, the third, was that the 19? Yeah, but it was an Audi involved. One of the uh, Attempto racing cars got right under the tail of Marcus Winkelhock. Yeah, safety car into the pit lane and a change of position immediately, but was it before the start finish line? They have to know which of those white stripes is the back important in. one. Had to pull back in, and Felipe Fraga said, now is the moment, and has dived his Aka ASP. This is the class leader, the Brazilian leading the, pro, the Silver Cup class. He's going to sweep wide, and Engel, sorry, Stoltz had to come off the power, and instead of gaining a position, he's lost one. Yeah, he anticipated it correctly, but just a little bit too prematurely. So all of a sudden, here we go back to the race leader, Vance and Abril. I know Hugen Holtz happened then up the hill through these magnificent sweeps and drops and angled and pampered corners all the way through the sand routes, all the way up to turn 10. And then you've got the big dip and the compression and you sort of leap out of it. And then the next thing you know, you're in turn 11. Well, already the first three have made good their escape in defending that fourth position. Ricky Solox Collard has lost ground to the race leaders. They'll be delighted. They can concentrate on their battle. And that's on April. We'll be hoping that Andrea Cordarelli gets onto the tail of Mirko Bortolotti. In fact, a really good first sector of this lap for the race leader, the Monegasque, Vance and April. He was a quarter of a second clear when they crossed the start finish line. It looks so like he's doubled that. Bortolotti trying his best to hang on. Cordarelli in turn trying to keep up with him. Then there's a slight gap of almost a second back to Ricky Collard in the Aston Martin. In fact, it looks as though it's even more than that. 
as they go midway around the lap through the slow corners coming behind the outer paddock they've got the final two corners to go but it's been a really really good restart that from Vance on April. I think if you put the camera back on Raffaele Marcello's face in the garage there might be a little movement in the corner of his mouth going upwards because that's a really good job done by April. they've been desperate to win the this year. thing that they need to do is not make the mistake that they made in Mazzano two weeks ago is to make that last minute cut into the pit lane and the team are not prepared there was no information that the 88 was going to make that pit stop and they were caught literally flat footed with no tires available and ready it's a horrendous moment for the team when they realise they've got no radio contact with their driver or partial radio contact. Caught out in Mizano in the heat of the battle on an incredibly hot weekend. It's cooler here. Hopefully cool heads this time as well. A pit visitor, looks like number 17, coming to serve a drive through penalty. That's Tom Gamble. Tom Gamble, well, he was pinged for causing a collision. They shouldn't have listened to us, but anyhow, we'll look at the replay again later on. This is looking backwards. What a fabulous shot. It also shows how dark it is out there. The sky is getting darker and darker. We're looking backwards from Bortolotti to Cordarelli. Well, if this is close, the battle from Ricky Collard backwards is closer still. There's not more of a, a second gap for anyone in the next six cars, apart from the gap between Perish Compank in ninth and Clement Schmidt in tenth. The Audi's in a big pack there. But uh, right now, it's all about this lead battle. It's all about Vance on a Brill hanging on. We're looking back from Portolotti's car. The car now in the middle of the shot, the 563 entry from the FFF Racing Team. Getting closer all the time, Andrea Cordarelli. Looks like it's been a better lap for Vance on a Brill. A little bit more of a gap. It was 0.6 of a second on the start. Now, all bouncing a little bit over the kerbs on the exit, kicking up the dust. So a little bit of breathing space added to Mirko Bortolotti. Down to the hands of Ernst Bock. It's still race leader Vance on a Brill. He was nearly eight tenths of a second clear on the start finish line. 1.3 seconds covered the top three. And again, Calderelli closes in from the back, getting closer again to Bortolotti, but Abril knocking off the laps. He's got Raffaele Marcello waiting in the pit lane to take over. And in the lead of the race, you can dictate when you come in. You're not being held up by anybody else. Well, Calderelli has dropped back a little bit compared to what he had been on the previous laps or so. And that may just be because he's just worked the car, the tires so hard that they've gone over their peak performance level and where it's been a defensive drive for Mirko Bortolotti, who's not been able to attack the leading Mercedes-Benz. Mercedes is in, all three are coming into the earliest opportunity. Well, I got the two Lamborghinis right, I didn't expect Vance and Abril to come into the earliest opportunity as well. But I have to say, it kind of makes sense for the Mercedes, get Raffaele Marcello in. But look at the two Lamborghinis, it'll be a second place, one or last in the pit stops. Now, that's a good move from the Aston Martin crew, because I think if the others had made their pit stops, all those cars have bottled up behind. So, literally, all of the top ten have come in. I think Felipe Fraga, in fact, continued. So, yes, he has. He is now leading the race, the silver leader. It's very, very busy in the pit lane here at Zambor. But I think uh, for Marcello, he probably got on the radio and said, come on, Vince, you've had enough time in the lead. It's my turn. But let's see. The 88 Mercedes in from the lead. It's back down onto the Oh, that's rolling. rolling. That's a good stop from back at ASP. 63 is rolling as well, but look... You've got team members from rival teams. So where is the, the 5-6-3 as it's still... It's just leaving the pit lane. So Marco uh, McPenny has lost, lost, lost position. So the experience... Lost, it's not lost position, but it's lost, yeah, a lot lost of time. Lost a lot of ground. And he's gone it, over the blend line. Oh, I don't believe Marco McPenny has driven over the blend line. Now, that's a broken blend line as opposed to a solid white line. I OK, we'll keep, that'll be. we'll keep an eye on the, on the warnings on the bottom of the screen. It looks as though um, the change from... Lucas Stoltz, tomorrow angle was a good one, but certainly the experience there of the Grasser Racing Team, they've always been good in the pit stops, and they gain ground, not position. They came out behind the 88 Acker crew, they came in from behind them. But let's take the There's the plan line, now watch, everybody is fine, but all of a sudden, this car in view now turns sharp left, goes over the blend line. In my view, that is a no-no, but it's a broken blend line, as opposed to other racetracks where you've got a solid blend line. Need to check the regulations on that one to see whether that is a technical offence or whether it's just reading the real book and understanding it very well. Sure the wheel and tyre has come off some car. Where has that happened? If that wasn't lying there as a. So if somebody has lost a wheel and tyre, we haven't seen which car that is. Well, let's take another look at. Oh, well, there this is a reason is. why David doesn't have four wheels on no, his wagon. Well, that tyre's the right front. That tyre is still doing about 60 miles an well, hour. Well, that's coming out of shape like, so it's it almost. Oh, no, it, it did catch him again. The side of the car. Well, there we go, and it kept on running. It's gone through the next corner and keeping on running almost two corners down the track. The gravel trap will do its job, but uh, 
That is why David Perel is in big, bad trouble. He'll limp back to the pit lane. It's amazing what you can do on three wheels, but not at race pace. Race pace, though, is what Raffaele Marcello will be doing. Timo Bogoslavski has now taken over the number 90 car, so the new leader returning to the lead of the race is the number 88 Mercedes, with the exception of the fact that Kim Lewis Schramm is still out on the track. He has not made a pit stop in that number five Phoenix Racing Audi. The 90 Mercedes has come in, has been handed over to Timo Bogoslavski a little filter down through the running, probably coming back in somewhere in the sort of 6th to 10th position, depending on how well the pit stop goes. So just as I was saying, the 88 Mercedes is back in the lead. Kim lewis Schramm has not pitted the number 5 Audi. That started some way down the orders. Uh, back on the 11th row, so 23rd, 24th fastest. And uh, that will come in sometime soon. Because still have 3 minutes 40 seconds before the pit window closes. But Raffaele Marcello immediately onto the ultimate pace, as you'd expect in the Acura ASB number. 88 Mercedes, so Raffaele Marcello into the lead of the race. Car number 24 now being worn for track limits, exceeding those. Car 24 is one of the two, three Santelot racing cars, Stefan Ortelli and Neil Stevenard. That was the one that came in with a puncture very early on. Uh, lost a lot of ground, but no ground being lost by the 88 Mercedes. Raffaele Marcello leading by 1.5 seconds over the Lamborghini of Christian Engelhardt. Marco Mapelli, another 2.2 seconds back in third place, is going out. Oh, yeah, because the back of the lap, oh, all the way round the Hugenholz hairpin bend. This is manner from heaven for the race leader. Vance on April will be starting to enjoy this race all the more. He did the first stint for the Acker ASP Mercedes team. He's handed over the 88 car in the lead to Raffaele Marcello. Now he'll be absorbed in this battle. Let's hope it doesn't come to blows because it's getting very close, this battle for second place. Christian Engelhardt just holding on from Marco Mapelli. Mauro Engel is right with these two Lamborghinis, but he's got the same problem now. His pace is dictated by the 563, which is dictated by the 63. Yeah, the 63 may actually be able, despite the flashing lights from Marco Bapelli, in the next lap, if Engel can get marginally closer to Bapelli, that will buy the second place runner, Christian Engelhardt, a little bit of breathing space. But if Mapelli is going to make his move, he's got to do it now because he can't do it when the Mercedes is right on his tail. So riding with Marco Mapelli, Lucas Stoltz got a little bit muscled out and in his stage of the race, fought back a good pit stop. Ricky Collard was running ahead of that car when it came to around the pit stops, but Collard's car, the 76 Aston Martin, down into seventh place, lost out the pit stop sequence, but the second Lamborghini getting ever, ever closer to Engelhardt. Engelhardt getting a bit ragged now, trying to hang well, on. Well, he's under pressure, he's trying to maintain the gap, but look, I mean, Mapelli looks down the inside going into turn 12, nothing in reality to you, and you can put yourself into jeopardy because that offers up opportunities for Maro Engel. In fact, Maro Engel could almost have sort of half stuck the nose of the Mercedes up the inside into turn 12, but thought the wiser and correctly better of it because there would have been contact had he done so. It's super, super tight. This isn't for the, this is second, third and fourth. Andrea Caldarelli, his car's in third place in the hands of his teammate Marco Mapelli. He can only watch on from the sidelines. And look who's closer to in the very edge of the shot, Dries Van Tor. He hasn't been fighting with anyone, he's just been keeping his head down. There he comes into fifth place, well, in fifth place, he was fifth place before, but he was two and a bit seconds down on Mauro Engel at the start of the lap. I reckon he's down to, he's found probably the best part of one of those seconds to claim back. Yes, he did, one second taken off, so suddenly we got the best of the Audis getting closer. But let's go down to feel the pressure in the pits. We're down with Mirko Bortolotti, with Dakota in the pits. Yes, I'm indeed with Mirko Bortolotti. We're sitting in the engineering room. Mirko doesn't really want to move because he just cannot take his eyes away from this race. Mirko, this is so interesting, isn't it, this yeah, battle? It's so exciting. Just bring me some popcorn and uh, enjoy this fight because this is proper racing. I mean, it's just, uh, just so cool to, to, to watch these guys racing. Uh, it's um, such a cool track and obviously the fight now for the podium is, is on, is literally on fire. Uh, it's four cards fighting for, for the last two podium spots at the moment. We have the best, the best position with P2. The leader is a little bit gone, he's four and a half, six seconds in front at the moment. So it's just uh, the fight is on for P2. So fingers crossed, eight minutes to go, maybe, maybe we can hold it and uh, it will be nice. It will be a really good podium for, for all of us, for, for, the, for two Lambos on the podium would be great, but hopefully we'll be in front. Fingers crossed that Christian keeps his position. Let's watch to the end. Thank you very much. Thank you very much indeed. Always great to hear from a driver who just loves his racing and his car is in second place. That was Mirko Bortolotti and his teammate Christian Engelhardt has not put a wheel wrong, but if there's half a gap opening up, Marco Mapelli will be diving for it. Up the rise they go, getting the power down as soon as they can. You can see the cars twitching. Another person thing twitching is Vincent Abril because his car is heading for its first win of the year. And we've lost 
don't tell me that's Bogoslavski. Yes, he was leading the Silver Cup class. So Hugo de Sadelier was getting very close in the Aston Martin. 0.17 of a second between them on the penultimate lap of the race. I'm afraid the Russian racer has gone into the gravel. Manson Abril can finally relax in the pit lane. He can get ready to celebrate with the Acker ASP Mercedes team. They took a second place at Mizzano, but that is nothing like as sweet as victory. And here sweeps the Italian Raffaele Marcello. He was looking a bit long in the face beforehand. There was a possibility. Go on, Vince. Give us a smile. Give us a cheer. Victory for the 88 Mercedes, and comfortably so. The second car of the finish line will be Christian Engelhardt in the 63. Grasso Lamborghini with Marco Mapelli, his shadow. Third place, not good enough to put a smile on the face of Andrea Cordarelli, still supremely well placed in the championship, but just couldn't get ahead of that rival Lamborghini team. Waiting for the car that's going to win the Silver Cup class. There it comes around the corner. Hugo de Sadelier, the 62, Aston Martin, crossing the line in sixth place overall to win the Silver Cup class. And the 519 Lamborghini will also take uh, the victory in the Pro-Am class. Let's take a look at the finishing order. Eight and a half seconds clear. The Aka ASP team started from pole position by Vincent Abril, handed over to Raffaele Marcello, and the job was done because the battle behind was the tight one. Christian Engelhardt trying his best and succeeding in keeping huge amount of pressure off his shoulders from Marco Mapelli. Mauro Engel caught up into fourth place. Dries Van Tor closed in in fifth, but they could not pass Engelhardt. Engelhardt taking home the 12 points for second place, hugely well earned. And let's go down because John is joined by our race winning pair, Marcello and April. Vincent, perfect start, perfect stint. <laughs> it's about time. Uh, I, I think this place and I, it's a, it's a love story. I love this place. Um, I'm going to buy a house here, I think. <laughs> no, honestly, th thank you so much to the whole team. Uh, it's been we all know it's been very tough uh, at the beginning of the year. We had a lot of expectations, high hopes within ourselves and everyone. Uh, but for some reason, racing is, is not always going to plan. But we have a mega team that believes in us and that gave us the tool today to fight for a victory. And yeah, the qualifying was mega. The pole was just a good feeling for me to be back there. and. To drive with Lelo, it's it's a pleasure. He's a great, fantastic driver, and I think we are very happy today. Rafi had a great pit stop. It gave you that little cushion initially, but then you just eased away from the two Lamborghini. Yeah, I think like the TFF Lambo was a bit quicker than the Grasser one, I think. But everyone was quite packed, so I think I, I took a gap because of it. But for sure, the FFF Lambo was, was quite strong. Like, I think the same pace as me, maybe even quicker, but because they had also new tyres, because we had one set of leaking quali. But, I mean, yeah, it's, as I've been said, it was quite tough this year. And I think to, to be back in this good form for Mizano in here now is good for, like, for Spa, because yeah, Spa is the big one. So I think it's a good motivation for us, for the team, to be back that quickly not only the victory like to be back with the speed like before spa and yeah but it's good today super team effort guys well done as eric fires brings out uh, some very attractive looking uh, glassware trophies to the podium sun has now broken through just about down in the pit lane but uh, it's been a day where it's been little margins of weather that have made uh, considerable dis uh, differences to the drivers out on the track and it was all about getting it right in qualifying and the 88 Mercedes crew did exactly that that's how they got pole position for Vance and Abril who takes the first of two winners trophy he did the job at the start of the race and for Raffaele Marcello he stroked it home knowing that battle for second place behind them with the 63 Lamborghini staying at the head of it was manna from heaven for him smiles all round for those behind them, they're going to have to choose to step up to the mark tomorrow, and rest assured, they will be. Well, the sun came out just in time for the podium yesterday. Bright sunshine after a grey morning here at Zandvoort for the second of the two races for the Blancpain GT World Challenge Europe. Of course, the grid totally shuffled around. The second drivers set the grid for today's race, and we have a, an Audi on pole. It's the number 25 car that started way down the grid yesterday. Simon Gachet and the driver who took that pole position, Christopher Hasser. But track temperature finally getting up to a decent heat. Nearly 26 degrees, air temperature just under 20. Just looking at the championship points there, just to st stress that Lucas Stoltz, Mauro Engel in the black Falcon Mercedes just went through shot leading, but it's only four points. But for Mapelli and Calderelli, who are challenging, they're starting back in 14th position on the grid. So they are going to have to really keep their, their attack. Very consistent, but very tidy indeed. Taking a risk could lead to who knows what. Oh dear, oh dear. Yesterday it was a disaster for Marcus Winkelhock. That car taken out on the opening lap, and today it's parked at the side of the circuit, has uh, not got very far around the track. Hopefully that can be got clear. 
but that's just on the exit of Tarzan, so only got around the first two, well, it's a two-part quarter. Well, the, well, there's the message, extra yeah, formation there's, there's a further vehicle down, you can see under yellow flags. So that's absolutely the sensible thing to do, but for all the drivers, it's about controlling their emotions now, staying cool, staying calm. A lot of them are saying, what's happening, what's happening? So the WRT Brains Trust looking at screens, Vincent Voss in the middle, trying to decide what's happening. End of the second formation lap. The clock has started running now, 57 minutes. So it did start at the start of the second formation lap. We are going to be underway. The safety car will pull to the side of the circuit. Well, we've got 26 cars Watch coming out to play. Lights. Red lights in the middle of the starting gantry. Two by two formation. They're not going to flick it yet. Getting, as soon as they go green, the hammer's got to go down. We had an incident. We got people jumping out of formation well, in the, the middle order. People are long hold. Now we're green. We're underway. And it looks so. Oh, is, is uh, Dries Van Torn marginally ahead? Door handle, door handle. But Christopher Haas holds down that first position. Pause of breaths. Who's going to do? Milan Matai Drudy pushing around the outside. The number two, Charles Viertz driven. Uh, Audi also trying to gain position. So just about holding on the lead of the race. Uh, and Jim Plyer in that blue Mercedes in fifth, sixth place is holding station. Maybe you're able to pick up a place. So Drudy is being muscled out to the outside. Yes, he is. So up one place goes uh, Christian Engelhart. He finished yesterday's race. He started fifth. He's back into fifth. It's side by side through the sweepers. The That's Slotter Makabov. That is bold to hold uh, on to that position. Absolutely. I mean, two modern GT3 cars are pretty wide in themselves. To get two side by side up the hill through Rob Slotter Makabov into Schlabach is something that uh, is eye opening, particularly on the opening of this opening lap. Well, good steady start for those at the front. Nice, tidy run for all those behind. Right back to Wolfgang Triller bringing up the rear in the AM class Ferrari. It looks at the moment as though it's a very tidy getaway from Christopher Haas. He's getting, getting away from Dries Van Tor. There was that challenge down to Tarzan first time around. 76 Aston Martin. Is that a little bit of bodywork damage? I'm just trying to see if something was hanging off the back of that. Oh, wheels from the Rinaldi Ferrari into the dirt on the outside from David Perel there, but he keeps it under control, keeps the power down, and blasts back down to this corner. The hands of Ernst Bock. Very, very tight indeed. Tight in terms of the corner, tight in terms of the racing. And now it's Raffaele Marcello trying to stay cool, calm, collected. He started from, let me think, seventh place on the grid. He should be running in about that position, but uh, it's all about not making mistakes. Yes, I mean, you've got to be patient. There are not that very many places around the racetrack where you can execute a clean overtake. You've got to do your preparation. You've got to also remember that in the field, there are a number of cars that are slightly easier on their tyres than some of the competitors. The Mercedes is on the easier side of that equation. Christian Meese made good ground, he started from 10th, he is up to 8th, now the Hawksworth car is coming through, the one and only Lexus, the Tech 1 team, picking up position, so good advances there, and it's very, very tight, just and, outside yeah, the top 10. Andrea Caldarelli trying to find a way around the outside of that sister car, I think that... Uh, OK, we Bill saw... Keys in the 519. Message on screen, jumps, drive-through penalty, jump start, car 19, we saw one in the middle order jinking out, and that was uh, Michele Beretta, one of the two Grasso Racing Lamborghinis. Uh, I felt that that was not a deliberate attempt, it was just somebody, the car ahead of him backed up, and I think he just turned to the middle or the outside or whatever to avoid a contact, I don't think there was any intent on what I would describe as taking, as, uh, jumping the start. I that's, think the, that's the problem I was concerned short. about, is this so tightly compacted grid waiting until everybody's almost at the, the underneath the, the lights where they change, that there's always the risk of, of another incident occurring. Well, Christian Mies pushing very hard at the number two Audi, right under the tail of Jim Plas, Pro-Am leading Mercedes. David Perel, we saw him dip the wheels of that uh, green Rinaldi racing Ferrari in the dirt. He's up to second in the Pro-Am class. Let's take a look. The 19 uh, Lamborghini jinked out of position. Now he's sort of in no man's land. He can't get back into his own line, which is no, on the pit wall side. I mean, what, I mean, other than having you know, going up and seeing the stewards and explaining, and there will be data logging and information available to the stewards to examine and determine if it was a, a, a deliberate attempt or whether it was a force majeure situation. What we're seeing, though, is uh, just a constant escape by Santalot Racing's race leader, Christopher Hassa. He's now 4.4 seconds clear of Dries Van Tour, gaining more than half a second of that, making it easy. At these seconds, as long as there's no safety car, absolutely a gift to the team because they can then time their pit stop and really make it when they want to. Yes, and that's going to be a key to the outcome. And for Santa Lock, if they can get Christopher Hassa in, do the driver change cleanly, Simon Gashe get in, then they are in the pound seat. But there are so many aspects, factors that will come into play. Whether it is, well, it was about five minutes ago, blue sky and with billowy clouds. Now it's billowy clouds and getting more grey. Yeah, the wind's still blowing down the start, finish straight towards the drivers as they charge down to Tarzan. Right now, riding on, the num on board the number two Audi, great place to be with Christopher Meese. He'll hand over to 
Charles Vietz later in the race. We can have the first pit stop when it says 35 minutes left at the top on the countdown clock and through all the way to 25. So when they make these pit stops is a matter of conjecture because a lot of the drivers here, and most notably Christian Lee, he's looking very quick, but he's stuck in behind the Pro-Am class leader, Jim Pla in that 87 Acker ASP Mercedes sitting in front of him and not looking at all flustered. And looks like rain well, on the lens. Indeed it does, and I think it might well be raining that part of the racetrack. Um, we've had this or before. Shower certainly coming in. We've had this before this morning and yesterday showers at different points on the circuit. Just yes. want to finish look, the point. Look, yeah, it is. Through the final sequence of corners, maybe coming to the start for the straight. 563, Marco Mapelli, Andrea Cordarelli featuring right at the sharp end of the championship, but then down in 12th place. Windscreen wipers are on. There is the confirmation we need. A little bit of consternation in the WRT team. Maro Engel dropped away, I don't know what happened, maybe he just overran slightly going down into that Hans Erz box. But 656 trying to go the long way around, and that's a brave manoeuvre. Look, the Lexus is in for some strange reason. Well, it was sounding fabulous last time around, running in 13th place, right on uh, 14th place on Fred Verbsch's tail. Looks like so he's picked up a puncture, well, has he? That's all I can think it is. There's no other bond that's going to come up, so maybe there's another issue. That... OK, the second place battle is as tight as it's ever been. Dries Van Toren, the number one Audi, being pushed all the way around by Maro Engel. But the driver who's now just a whisker under eight seconds clear, just being given a warning for not respecting track limits, he's not under pressure, but he's just trying to build the biggest example, uh, uh, advantage he could possibly get, so Christopher Haas, a race leader, has got to watch out, in 76, Marvin Kirchhofer in the better place to the two Aston Martins in 11, there he is in the grey car, just in the background of us, leading the car, 563, the Calderelli Mapelli Lamborghini that is the overall points leader at this point in the series when the Endurance and the Blancpain GT World Challenge points are totted up. 20 points clear of Engel and Stoltz in that, but behind it on the track today. When you see the pace that our race leader Christopher Haas is achieving lap after lap. Oh, just news from the pits is uh, that we've just heard it's a steering problem for the Lexus, so very bad news. And also the fact I was really enjoying it, sound down the start finish straight, it's got the most magnificent engine though. So we'll have to wait to future events to experience that all over again. Well, looks who's that lining up to take over? There we have it, just waiting. So the first the WRT drivers. Yeah, I was wondering if it was Simon Gachet waiting to take over this car, but 10.8 seconds clear, but there'd been one, if not possibly even a second warning. It may have been a long hole for the number 25 car leading the race, but Christopher Hasser carries on on his way. Just I, tell you, I tell you, Dries Van Thor is going to come in now. There we are. You're a magician, John Watson. You're because a magician. WRT want to get that car in and put on a fresh set or a new set of rubber at the earliest opportunity because they know that all they're doing is losing rather than being able to move forward. They can do a good job in this pit stop because that's what they excel at as well as what they do actually on the racetrack. OK, so we know who was standing in the pit lane. It was the blue helmeted Ezekiel Perez Compank, of course, the colours of the Argentinian flag. He climbs back. Well, he climbs into the car, Dries Van Tor climbs out, comes in from second place. Just remember, the gap was uh, around 11 seconds. Now, it's Matai Drudy up into second place. He didn't pit, he was in fourth on the track. Kelvin van der Linde up to third, and the leading car in Pro-Am, Jim Pla, up to fourth place. Half the field in for their pit stop, another very tiny but behind pit stop. The, behind the 63 Lamborghini, so Mirko Bortolotti and the Grasser Racing have done a better job. Look at the four Mercedes comes out as well to Lucas Stoltz behind the wheel. Now, that, I put it on that dotted pit lane exit the blend line it isn't mandatory that you stay to the right of it but it is advised that's from the steward it is a broken white line so it's not mandatory but it's advised okay no change for one and four they made their pit stops handing over to Ezekiel Perez Compank and Lucas Stoltz but how did that uh, Lamborghini get ahead of them because that came in from behind from fifth overall for Christian Engelhardt now in the hands of Mirko Bortolotti and it appears well, to be in front but don't forget the black falcon Mercedes was behind it is still behind it so I don't think there was a, a great deal of difference between the two of them but the Grasser racing team people you know sometimes you go I know there's a minimum pit stop time let's hope they have at least achieved that because a lot of advantage gained there by the 63 crew and Mirko Bortolotti is out there doing what he wants to do and does very, very well indeed. 32 and a half minutes remaining, still seven and a half minutes until the pit window closes. The order will continue to shuffle, but uh, what will happen at the front of the field, it will continue to stretch as Christopher Haas dominates from the front. And Christopher Haas is in. Christopher Meese, I beg your pardon. Christopher Meese doing, coming in, handing over. So that's going to be uh, Charles Vetch goes out, rolls down the pit lane. Well, here's our race leader, and handsomely so. Nearly 13 seconds clear of Matai Drudy. Matai was running, leading the Silver Cup. He was running fourth, became second, and a couple of cars ahead of him pulled into second, uh, till to make their pit stops. John? Nico Bastian, car 25th, but that's because it's out of, out of sync. But actually, on his out lap, 
has put the fastest single sector in sector two of anybody so far this afternoon. Nico Bastian, always impressive, hasn't confirmed over that speed. Right, you can see the body language, Mirko Bortolotti looks like he's gained two positions by getting ahead of the number one Audi and the number four Mercedes, but he just banged in the fastest first sector of anyone. He is on a mission. Yesterday they held on to second place, now Raffaele Marcello gets out and Vanson Abril gets in. Don't forget that was running in ninth position, it wasn't a dream position. They were yesterday's winners though, and this is the car, John, the Mercedes you always think is that little bit lighter on its rubber. Let's see what it's like at the end of this stint for the Monegasque. Is our race leader coming in this time? He's still got a potential five minutes. I don't I don't think he's going to come in just yet. Of course he does. I knew if I said that he would. Yeah, there we are. So, fastest car on the racetrack right now is, surprise, surprise, 563 Lamborghini Andrea Caldarelli, 137.4. That's his first flying lap on his fresh set of rubber. And we wait until everybody has made those mandatory pit stops before we get a, a clearer picture of where everybody is. And certainly, there's the 63 Lamborghini Mirko Portolotti who was the beneficiary of an excellent switch around, turn around by Grasso Racing. There's what there was a lead car. So Simon Gachet will get in, Santa Lock. And this is where they need to ensure that all that good work that Christopher Hassa did has Thank not been compromised by a not brilliant pit stop. So there is the car that potentially, well, Hassa, now the, the Simon Gachet is rolling, and because he was near the pit lane exit, but look at the Lamborghini bearing down. There's not going to be an awful lot of nip and tuck between those two. Yeah, I just want to pick, point out we've got uh, two hours. It's a different that's, Lamborghini. That's, that's, a, that's, a that's the one that's out. effectively into second yes. place. But don't forget, we've still got uh, Bataya Drudy owing us a pit stop and Kelvin van der Linde, both in attempt to racing Audis. They are first and second in this race, on the move on the track, but they still need to make a pit stop. About half a dozen other drivers do owe us one as well. Oh, well you can see the difference on those pit stop times because Dries van Tours car uh, but he gave it to Perry Compact, 44.5. Did you see the time for the 63 Lamborghini? It was 41.9 seconds, so two and a half seconds gained. And that's why it's moved from effective fifth place before the pit stops this, up to effective second. This battle, Yuzuki Alpera is compact under pressure. Uh, and you can see Lucas Stoltz trying to stick the nose of the Mercedes, and he's more or less found himself, well, just about enough, I thought he was going to say enough gap to capitalise on the exit. So he's got Calderelli pushing Vance and Abril to... All he is worth, can't get any closer than that. And the hook and holds help, and then up the hill, the Mercedes gets on the throttle a little bit earlier, it gives up the initial squirt off the corner. But the Lamborghini, this 563 Lamborghini, of all the cars in the field, I've watched it over this weekend, I watched it at Mazzano, we've seen it all the way back to Monza. What the team are doing with this car is something that has made the 563 in particular look such a useful race car. You can more or less drive it pretty much any part of the racetrack you want to, and it just looks like it's always with the driver. It looks like a place change may be about to happen because Nico Bastian, a driver you always break very highly, is pushing Tom Gamble, the Mercedes driver, to the outside. Oh, bit of a twitch under braking. 89 car as it tries to monster the number 17 Audi, but young British racer Tom Gamble, wise to that, controls the corner. Well, we see Mirko Bortolotti pressing on in second place. Let's go down to the pits because the driver who started, Christian Engelhart, is with Dakota. Christian, now starting fifth on the grid, you've made up such good time in the pit stop. Well done for that. Yeah, this one is really down to the guys. They train so much and today they really did a great pit stop. Uh, it was a train, the race basically from the start. Uh, I had a good start, nearly got into fourth, but uh, ended up staying in fifth and uh, I had a much better pace than the, the car in front or the cars in front. We were all stuck behind uh, an Audi and uh, then we came in all together in the pit lane and uh, it was down to the guys. They made a fantastic pit stop today and uh, we moved up to second. So really happy about that. Thank you, Christian. Good luck. Thank you. Thank you, Christian Engelhardt. I think Mirko Bortolotti with about a four and a bit second advantage, a driver of his talent, should be fairly safe in second place. He's got no answers though. Just under 10 seconds down on the race leader, Simon Gachet driving absolutely beautifully as we go back to this battle for third and fourth place, which is a somewhat more stressful situation, particularly for the number one Audi. Well, it certainly is, and in their own way, they're both delaying the other. Yes, the number one Audi is still ahead in the hands of Ezekiel Pericompex, Lucas Stoltz pushing all along, but they're both slightly compromised, one by having to be defensive, the other by having the other car where he wants to go. So all along, the race-leading duo of Gachet and Bortolotti pulling clear. Good Watch run here. this time. This is the best chance that Lucas Stoltz has had. He had to put the brakes on because he almost overran the back of... Perez compact coming through the final turn, and that again is probably going to compromise the run he was building to make as he comes down start in history. Is he going to think about it? He's a bit too far behind, but it would be a brave and probably foolish attempt to take a position away. It would most likely end up in contact 
Griff for third place, Adi. Simon Gachet running a lonely race. There's the second place Lamborghini number 63 of Mirko Bortolotti. And that is the gap coming out of Tarzan now towards the Gerlach box sweepers. Second, uh, third and fourth, Ezekiel Perez Compact. Lucas Stoltz, the car in fifth is Charles Beards. He's been trying his best to chip away at their advantage, but actually last time around uh, lost a little bit, but he looked stuck in fifth place. And uh, Andrea Caldarelli decided he likes that Mercedes so much he's going to give it a little kiss up the rear. But uh, I think we went just short of contact. This is the battle for sixth place. They know they must need the points. They know they must score the points, must land them, must put them in the bag, whatever you want to say. But sixth and seventh, it's not a big haul of points, but it's all about making sure you don't come away with nothing but certainly for Simon Gachet and Christopher Haas, who are dominating this event as we get I closer mean, and closer again. They're well clear for the full you, points. You cannot get any closer to another race car other than when you might run into the back of it. And Calderelli had to stay to the left of the Mercedes coming down into turn 13 to ensure that there wasn't any contact. So there is the camera from the side of the racetrack. You get the view. The Calderelli has driven the wheels off the Lamborghini to force an error from Vance and Abril and the Mercedes still has not achieved that goal. Number 10 is Rick Broikens facing backwards and the car that came into the pits at about the same time clearly might, might have had contact. They were fighting just at the tail at the end of the top 10, maybe 10th to 12th places, and Clement Schmidt in the pit garage. He's a Tempto racing Audi and the Team WRT Audi facing backwards is Rick Broikens, so may yet be some uh, words to be had. Now the only car running in the AM class is just in front of this battle. <laughs> Uh, for third place overall, but uh, no such problems at all for the race leader for Santa Lock Racing finally they hit the top step this year and look at this a wonderful sweep The first Audi win of the year came two weekends ago at Mizano and now another Audi win But this time it's the Santa Lock Racing team and it's Simon Gachet lights are flashing in the background He takes the chequered flag Christopher Haas up there on the pit wall works Audi driver really with a big big smile on his face Second place, another really good job there from the 63 Lamborghini crew from Grasser Racing Team. But it was all about Santa Lock today. Third place, it's just going to be the number one Audi. So great run there, really staunch defence from Ezekiel Perez Compact. The Black Falcon Mercedes, yet another fourth place. Charles Viertz, fifth, the number two Audi. Vance Abril hangs on in the Acker ASP 88 Mercedes to sixth place, right on his heels is Andrea Cordarelli. But let's take a look at the results. 9.9 .9 seconds from first to second. What a run from Christopher Haas and Simon Gasha, who brought it home for the Santalot Audi team. Mirko Bortolossi, Christian Engelhardt, useful points here. Two second places, fa fabulous runs. And Ezekiel perez Compang back from injury, resisting all the challenge from uh, Lucas Stoltz to hold on to that third place for the team WRT Audi crew. And as you can see, just a, th a third of a second ahead of Lucas Stoltz and Mauro Engel. And John has got our winners today. The driver who started, Seymour, uh, Christopher Hasser, handed to Simon Gachet. Full points. Seymour, you must be delighted. Yeah, I'm so happy to be here today. Uh, it was a hard race, but Mr. Hazi did a fantastic job during all the weekend. It was easy for me at the end to keep my place. So thank you, Santa Luc. Thank you, Mr. Hazi. Thank you, all the team. Well done. Christopher, you got the lead. It was always a bit difficult into turn one. Dries van Thor tried to take the position away, but once you got ahead, you were just gone, man. Yeah, to be honest, I was a little bit surprised too, um, but I had such a good balance in my Santa Log Audi, and at the same time, even at such a good speed. So for me, it was just to give the rhythm, um, and for sure, today, I call it a perfect race. Congratulations, well done. So after the Marseillais for Sancelot Racing, the French team, Eric Viers, Chief Sporting Officer of Circuit Zambor, a, a man who's going to be very, very busy indeed as the World Championship comes back here for the first time in since 1985. Many modifications to be made, but right now no modifications at all needed to what produced a fabulous race. Undulating circuit at Zambor, weather often plays a role in this race, and it had a little hint it might come and play, but it's just by and large stayed away. We stayed dry. It did the early phase of the race. There was a, a sort of localized rain shower, caught a few drivers slightly unexpectedly. But it, by the time they got back for the following lap, it had all gone and cleared, so it didn't come into play. Uh, it was a race of ifs and ands and buts, but clearly the big winner of all this was the 63 Lamborghini, that mega pit stop and getting itself elevated up onto the second place on the podium. And for that, they get $10,000 presented, euros presented by Stefan Rattel, the CEO and founder 
of the SRO Motorsports Group. A 12,500 euros for the crew on the top step. And uh, as much as anything, it's the trophies that mean everything to those drivers. They worked so hard this season, and it's been coming increasingly good for them. The bottles of champagne are coming out, getting ready to get sprayed. The crew preparing to run away just in case they get caught. It's been a fabulous weekend of racing, and the next time out for the Blancpain Championships is at Spa 24 hours.